While the draw would still help win the group, the lack of fans in stadiums certainly does negate the notion that these places are fortresses, especially when you don't have 90,000 voices hoping to cheer you on. The same can be said of Juve though, as COVID cases are on the rise in both Spain and Italy. Add to that the resignation of the board, which we will have a video on shortly. And this means that this fixture against Juventus has a whole lot of chaos going on off the field as well as on it. Hi, I'm Dan Hilton. This is the Barcelona Podcast, YouTube exclusive. Anyway, while that chaos all takes place in the background, Barcelona will be facing Juventus, who are unbeaten this season but are currently sitting 5th in the Serie A table, coming off a draw with Hellas Verona. Much like El Clasico, to understand the major themes heading into the match, it's probably best to discuss who will be taking part in the game and what kind of form they may be in. For starters, the headline is Cristiano Ronaldo's availability. People not plugged into these teams will just say this is Messi versus Ronaldo, and it loses its shine if Ronaldo isn't back from COVID, which is obviously good news for Barcelona, but Juve are still favorites in the match. Ronaldo's three goals this season leads the team, but you could argue that without him, the rest of the old lady are able to express themselves a bit better. Now, where have we heard that before? Before we get to any of the Juve players, let's talk Andrea Pirlo. Coleman and Pirlo are both in their first seasons with the clubs, two legends returning to lead their old clubs back to glory. But the big difference is that Coleman has been managing for 20 years, and Pirlo has been a manager for less than three months. If it matters, he only received his UEFA Pro license on September 16th. Tactics matter, but Pirlo already seems to be more the Zidane-style manager, a man that will command respect with his CV, manage the egos, and do just enough of the tactical stuff to let his talent win some trophies. Though Coleman and Pirlo are both in their first seasons, you get the idea that even if Juve don't win Serie A for the first time in forever this season, he will be given time to get comfortable in the chair, unless things go incredibly downhill in Turin, which I don't expect them to. Coleman will probably be gone by July and potentially before that. While Coleman still tinkers with his personnel and his new system, Pirlo continued on the path of his predecessors, saw in some of the ideas of his direct predecessor, Mauricio Sarri, opting to trot out Juve's true and tested 3-5-2. It's in this formation that Juve has a lot of, and has had a lot of, same issues that Barca faces. They have star players not in natural positions, older veterans with major roles and importance of the team on the field, and question marks surrounding their health. Once again I ask, sound familiar? Juve have only conceded 4 goals this season in 6 matches this year. For Barca, it's 6-6. Six and six. The old lady is still built on her back line, but that's actually the place where Pirlo probably deserves the most credit. In front of Chesney has been a rotating cast of characters, with Giorgio Chiellini, now 36, missing more time than playing, and finally showing the signs of his age when he does play. That's less so for 33-year-old Leonardo Bonucci, who should anchor the back three. Barca fans who were looking for payback on Matias De Ligt for spurning the Belgrana will have to wait because he's out with Chiellini due to injury. Though due to their credit, 22-year-old Turkish center back Mary De Moral has been solid on one side of Bonucci, and old Man City and Real Madrid right back Danilo has done very well as a makeshift right center back. These center backs are essential to Pilo's system, one that prioritizes building through the middle from the center backs, then overloading one side of the field for a quick switch to a wing back on the opposite side to create a goal scoring opportunity. So understandably, it's in the midfield where this game gets complicated. A midfield that includes Arter, Rodrigo Bentenker, Adrian Rabio, Aaron Ramsey, Weston McKenney, and Sammy Kadira. It doesn't have a single name that individually strikes fear in an opponent, but that is a solid group altogether. And at the moment, any combination of three has looked more in form and more cohesive than the issues plaguing the double pivot and whoever the central attacking midfielder is for Barca. Without Ronaldo, though, the Juve front line and wingers don't necessarily fill you with dread either. Any of Federico Kiasu, Dejan Kulishevsky, Federico Benedeschi, or Juan Cuadrado could have a good day, or they could go missing on the evening. With Ronaldo out, Paulo Dybala becomes the X Factor. When we think of the Griezmann, Isco, Coutinho, James at Madrid, and Bayern, we have seen times in Dybala's Juve career where he fits in that same mold. Unbelievably talented players who just don't fit with the team they are on. Next to Alvaro Morata though, Dybala is able to float a bit more and express himself better. As we saw with Busquets against Fede Valverde though, I'm a little nervous about Dybala popping up wherever he pleases, and that includes if Komen goes with De Young and Pjanic. That said, I actually like the fact that we will get to see Ronald Araujo, starting because of Pique's red card against Ferran Varos, and I'd like to see Araujo deal with Dybala, as I expect Lenglet will largely stay with Morata and let Araujo use his speed to put out fires before they happen. This could unfortunately pin back a combination of Alba, Roberto, and Dest, whichever two of the three start, not allowing them to get involved with the attack in fear of having one of the wingers in behind. 
The other big question for Coleman is how he will set up his front four and how the hamstring injury to Coutinho changes his thinking. Both Frances and I gave our picks for the starting 11 on this week's podcast, but I will add that having given it more thought, I might change from Dembele to Trincao in this one due to Juve's desire to play through the middle, then overload certain sides with a floating Dybala, one of the midfield three and one of the wingbacks. That's a lot of defensive work for Dembele, who could be more useful here to unbalance a game late after Juve's wingbacks have put some miles on or Pilo has used his subs. And as I say all that about tactics formations, don't be married to the idea that Pilo will stick with a 3-5-2. He's still very much in the early parts of his tenure. And as Juve legend Alessandro Del Piero put it, Pilo is looking for solutions. And I'm paraphrasing the next part here, it shouldn't be counted out that he will change the formation. Much like the flu of 1919, the Spanish Civil War, and many other world events, there are times when things going on outside of the walls of FC Barcelona are bigger than what's happening on the field. Money has brought football back in a time of COVID. That's the same reason why Ronaldo won't be taking part in this game. But there won't be any excuses for the 22 plus players that we're featuring in this contest between the lines. This match isn't a make it or break it moment for either of these teams. But for Barcelona, who have all that chaos going on with their president resigning, a win against Juventus would go a long way in helping to right the ship this season. But win or lose, make sure to check back here for the match review, give this video a like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. Also keep a lookout for all of our different content about the resignation of the president here in video form, as well as our weekly podcast. And until next time, as always, Forza Barca.